Hello, and welcome to the Military Child Education Coalition Parent to Parent Webinar, Building the College Mindset in Ages 15 and Up. This webinar is funded through a generous donation from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and is the final webinar in our four webinar series. If you've missed the previous three webinars, Building a College Mindset, Birth through Age 9, Ages 9 through 12, or 12 through 15, you can find the recording on our website on the webinar page. If you did attend a previous webinar, you are going to hear some of the same information. We do this so that we don't skip important concepts as we progress through the different age-related sessions. Many of our participants are only going to attend the webinar relative to the age of their child, so we need to be sure that all the concepts are covered appropriately. We also ask that you keep in mind that this is a webinar about building mindset in your child about attending college, not instruction on how to get them into college. The Military Child Education Coalition is a not-for-profit organization that works with parents to help them become their child's best advocate. MSEC promotes partnerships between communities, military installations, and the local school districts. In 2005, they created the Parent-to-Parent -parent Program to better provide parents with resources and information to empower them in their role as advocates for their children as they negotiate the complex and diverse educational systems found throughout the U.S. and the world. Our parent-to-parent -parent teams are made up of individuals with personal experience and professional training on moving, separation, and the reality of change for military children. My name is Heather Dunton, and I was an Army brat growing up. I served 10 years in the Army as an aviation officer, and I am now a military spouse and raising two military children, currently ages 9 and 12. Hi, I'm Cindy Rich, and I've been with MSEC and Parent to Parent for more than eight years. I'm married to an active duty soldier, and together we've raised three children, navigated each of them through eight schools, and each have successfully applied and graduated from college. There are approximately 4 million military and veteran-connected children in the United States and at duty stations across the globe. On average, they experience seven to nine relocations as a result of their parents' military service. As you might expect, the logistical and emotional challenges of these relocations play a significant role in their lives. The Military Child Education Coalition, or MSEC, is a nonprofit organization focused exclusively on the well being of America's military and veteran connected children. MSEC offers a broad range of programs that address academic opportunity and excellence, school transition support, and developmental needs. MSEC began offering parent workshops in highly impacted military communities in 2006 through the introduction of Parent to Parent a program that is designed to help parents guide their children through the often confusing changes that accompany a military lifestyle. These workshops are presented by teams of individuals with personal experience and professional training on mobility, separation, and the reality of change for military children. Parent to Parent provides participants the resources and information to empower them in the role as an advocate for their children to help them negotiate our diverse educational systems. Today, you join more than 200,000 military-connected parents who have participated in these workshops worldwide since the program's inception. In 2014, MSEC began developing parent webinars to provide information and resources to military-connected parents who may not be located in a community with a local parent-to-parent -parent team. Through these webinars, MSEC offers the same information developed for face-to-face -face workshops, but in a web-based format, accessible to all parents. While all of us at MSEC hope you find this presentation informative, our ultimate goal is to ensure that every military-connected child grows and thrives through good and challenging times in order to be college, workplace, and ultimately life-ready. The topics we'll be discussing today are the college mindset, college readiness, what students need to focus on to be more successfully um, put them into a position to attend college, social media presence,
students with special needs and how parents can help. First, let's start with the word mindset. According to Dr. Carol Dweck, mindset is when people believe that their most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. Brains and talent are just the starting point. This view creates a love of learning and a resilience that is essential for a great accomplishment. Mindset can be summed up as knowing that you're capable of something and pursuing it. The college mindset means making it a real, concrete, achievable thing for your child. We can start by making the connection that the harder they work in school, the better opportunities they will have to pursue their de desired career field. Discussing college is the first and most important step. Talk about it and explain it as though the child's next step following high school is going to college. Discuss where you went to college or any friends or family members who went to college. Make college part of your daily language. Throughout this webinar, we will use the term college when we address any form of post-secondary education. This term is used inclusively and is also meant to address anywhere higher education is pursued, including career and technical schools and community colleges. We suggest you keep this in mind when discussing college with your child, as not all children are interested in attending four-year universities. All of us need to follow our strengths, and for some, including your children, that can mean pursuing a technical career path. The best way to encourage your child to attend, want to attend college is to make a connection between higher education and a qual higher quality of life. More education opens up more opportunities and flexibility in their life. If one job or career comes to an unexpected end, education will always provide more opportunities to them. If your child is the first person in the family to consider college, they may be intimidated. Helping them build self-confidence through a growth mindset will help them overcome any self-doubt. Complimenting them on their hard work will go a long way. Hard work highlights the long-term effort, not the short-term results. The sooner they can start making a plan for college, the more successful they will be, especially if that plan also includes ideas and savings to pay for advanced education. Talking about college uses the term in everyday language, and visiting college campuses goes a long way in creating comfort zones. College is no longer an ambiguous place that people go to study day and night. Instead, it will become something that can be accomplished and something to look forward to. Students may welcome the opportunity to pursue subjects in more depth or take introductory classes in subjects they are interested in but know nothing about. Ensuring your child is understands the education is the foundation of their successful future is absolutely the key to building their mindset to attend college. Their education is like a, the foundation of a house. The more education they have, the bigger or stronger or higher they can build their house. Every certification, license, or degree is like building another room onto their house. And the beauty is that, that they get to choose the foundation. They get to choose how big, strong, or how high their house is, depending on the education they pursue and how much time, effort, and money they are willing to invest in their future. The reality is that higher education costs money. There are many scholarships and loans available to students, but being prepared is key. If there is a way for them to start saving now, encourage them to do so. If it means saving a percentage of birthday money or allowance, try to make it a habit they should see their money grow over time and start forming a plan on how to pay for college. They should not take for granted that mom and dad will pay for it. The most successful students figure out how to pay for college themselves, either through scholarships or working jobs while attending school. See what you can do about helping them now. If it's feasible, start a matching fund. It can be dollar for dollar, or every $200 they invest, you will invest 100. Or, if you haven't already considered starting a 529 educational saving plan, be creative. Learn more at savingforcollege.com. The idea for college can be overwhelming, especially at this age when students are still figuring out middle and high school. Having parental support is important to help keep them focused and motivated. The more you discuss college with them, the more you relate to them that is a priority in your family.
College readiness is simply the nuts and bolts of being ready for college, being prepared mentally, emotionally, academically, and financially. It's the overall picture of the college-ready student. The more challenging classes they choose to take now, the more academically, they, the academically prepared they will be for going on to college. In order to successfully prepare for college, you must plan in reverse or backwards plan. This means to ask the questions, what career does your child want? Which college will best prepare your child for that career? What high school classes does the college require for acceptance? Education is a stepping stone. Help your child set themselves up for success by planning backwards, starting with the end goal in mind. To ensure the most options, take the most advanced math classes available. If your child is in high school already, ensure that they take these courses. If they have not, they may have the opportunities through local community colleges, online, or summer school to take them. Taking these classes becomes critical to the military-connected students who may be transferring during their high school years. The Military Child Education Coalition recommends the following. Four English credits, four math credits completing Algebra I in ninth grade, three social studies credits, four science credits, two foreign language credits of the same language as a minimum, one computer science credit. If they don't have enough time to get all their desired classes in during the school year, have them consider taking summer school to fulfill the requirements. Research what courses offer dual credit or dual enrollment and plan to take those. Your school district may offer a variety of options advanced placement, international baccalaureate, or IB, and or advanced placement via individual determination, also known as AVID. Advanced placement, or AP classes, are college courses offered in high school. In order to receive college credit for the AP course, the student must take the AP exam, which is given in May. The advanced advancement via individual determination, or AVID program, helps students who have the potential to succeed in a rigorous academic program, but who need some support in the program, students take college preparatory classes and an AVID class, which teaches note-taking and study skills. To learn more about this program, go to www.avid.org. The International Baccalaureate, or IB program, encourages students to become active learners. IB is age-specific. Middle years program is for students 11 to 16, and the diploma program is for students 16 to 19 years old. To learn more about this program, go to www.ibo.org. If your child is undecided whether or not they are interested in college or whether they should take AP classes for credit, research has shown that students who earn college credits in high school are more likely to go on to college, even if they didn't initially plan to. This information is according to the Hawaii News Now. Good study habits are grounded in time management and self-discipline. Which, which comes with growth and maturity. Specifically, your child needs to focus on note-taking and efficient studying. Knowing or finding out what will be on the test in order to focus their study time will help. Does your child feel responsible for their own grades? Do they come home and do their homework or projects without being reminded or nagged? Put the ownership of their grades on them. Celebrate good gra grades with re when report cards come out, but avoid giving them monetary rewards. If they want to go to the college, then they need to be need to have good grades, and in order to succeed in college, they will need to be self-motivated. So start with those positive habits now. The grades your child makes starting in ninth grade count towards their college admissions and eligibility for scholarships, so they need to know to take it seriously starting their freshman year. Their ninth through twelfth grade grades reflect uh, their cumulative grade point average. Part of growing up is learning the ability to take care of yourself, learning independence and preparing for adulthood. The best parents are not the ones who do everything for their children. Children will be most successful if they know how to do things for themselves, and that starts now if they have not already started. Children at this age should be self-sufficient, able to take care of their daily needs to include cooking, laundry, and housekeeping. Not only will knowing how to take care of themselves be helpful and build independence, but it also builds incredible self-confidence. Study.com recommends in their guide for parents preparing your child early for college, a sense of confidence and responsibility not only helps ease the transition from college to high school to college,
but it's also vital for success in later life. Self-confidence can help your teenager appro approach professors with questions or problems and will make socializing with other students much easier. Helping your child to set difficult goals and encouraging him or her to follow through on them is one method of developing confidence and a sense of responsibility. In general, it's important to set boundaries and show that you expect your son or daughter to make mature decisions while also learning from the occasional mistake. Part of independence is knowing how to manage money. One way to teach your child monetary habits is dividing possible purchases into wants versus needs. They may not have many needs at this age that require them to manage their money, but remind them that when they are in college, they will need to buy their own food and gas for their car. Assist them with their choices now as they manage long-term wants versus short-term wants. Help them decide on big purchases that they are willing to save their money for, like big trips with scouts or school. When they get distracted with a short-term want, like a new video game or Xbox, remind them of their long-term financial, financial goals. For example, they may want to go to a private school, but they can afford to go to a state school. Make finances part of the discussion in deciding which options are best for your child. Time management is probably one of the hardest skills to master through school and into adulthood. Try to start working with your child now to balance homework, extracurricular activities, chores, and social time. Set up a family calendar, either digital or paper, so that everyone can put their activities on it. This will help them learn time management as well as predictability and expectations of others. A good time management skill is knowing how to read large amounts of information quickly. Finding ways to help them become fast readers is key. Find classes during the summer or at a local community college to help them cultivate this skill. Explore extracurricular activities and community organizations to join and search out leadership opportunities. Get involved in clubs, sports, and music. Colleges are looking for well-rounded individuals, not necessarily straight-A students. Through participation in these activities, students may find their spark or their passion in life or just a new hobby, but get them out there and get involved. A great way to learn whether or not your child's interest can become a career is to job shadow in a potential career field. Your child may find that this is not quite as glamorous as they may have thought it was going to be or they may find that they love it and wish to pursue it. Find out ways that they can job shadow. Use friends in the career field, friends of friends, or simply go and ask. There may be opportunities to volunteer or job shadow through scouting programs. For example, there are medical explorers and police explorers specifically designed to get students to become familiar with the career field and help them decide whether or not they want to continue their education in that direction. Standardized testing is part of the college application process. Most colleges require one or a combination of these tests. To best prepare, the SAT or ACT should be taken at least twice, but usually not more than three times. It is, an op it is important to find out which test the school you are interested in requires in order to avoid the time and money spent on them unnecessarily. The PACT is often referred to as the practice SAT. The students can qualify for many scholarships based on their scores on the PSAT, so it is important to take it seriously. Keep in mind that the test scores are only one part of the admissions process. Most schools use them in conjunction with the prospective students' grades and courses taken. Good preparation for the test is needed to develop confidence, and this can be done through practice tests or college test prep courses offered in your local community or online. Start researching scholarships that your child may qualify for. Creating a strategy to pay for college will have both short and long-term implications. Exploring the total cost of different colleges and the methods of paying for college will give you the information you need to make an informed decision later, while also giving your child the opportunity to graduate with as little debt as possible. Graduating with as little debt as possible is important because it later limits their career or graduate school choices later. Millions of dollars in scholarship money go unclaimed every year, so that is why we suggest you start researching scholarships that your child might qualify for early. Two websites that we recommend are www.fastweb.com and www.scholarships.com. As part of your financial planning, be sure to research and apply for financial aid, which can include grants, loans, and work-study opportunities. 
More information can be found at www.studentaid.ed.gov or FAFSA, F -A -F -S -A .ed .gov. Attend college fairs with your child also. You may pick up on information that they may not think is important. Discuss what you liked and disliked about each of the different colleges previewed. To give you something more concrete, we're going to break down the goals by grade level. Most 15-year-olds will be finishing up ninth grade, so let's start there. In ninth grade, we suggest that they should be working on these things. Find a cause and volunteer. Start a resume. Read to increase vocabulary. Get involved in clubs, sports, music. This is developing their well-roundedness. Go to a college fair. Learn street signs and how to drive. Get a driver's license. And, and maybe go to summer camp in the summer. Both the, li the licensing and going to summer camp will help increase their independence. All through their, although through, all through their grades in ninth grade count towards their cumulative GPA 10th and 11th grade should be very academically intense to set them up for success. So what I'm trying to say is 10th grade and 11th grade are the two more important years. So in 10th grade, we'd suggest the following. Take the PSAT in October. You don't want to miss that. Learn how to organize a calendar and assignments. Seek and take leadership roles in clubs and activities. Continue to volunteer. Identify colleges that they're, you're interested in. Take the ASVAB for career exploration and aptitude. Take driver's education. Get a driver's license. Earn money to save for college. And take the ACT and SAT prep courses. Again, 11th grade will be academically intense, but they need to continue to push through as well as continue to push themselves to stay involved. Here's what we suggest in 11th grade. Take AP or dual credit classes. Build a GPA as much as possible. Take the PSAT in October. Take prep courses or download free tests and practice. Take the SATs and the ACTs. Visit colleges. Consider dual enrollment for a senior year. Have your guidance counselor review your resume and college admissions essay and apply for scholarships. In their senior year, they should start to feel the benefits of their hard work. The last two or three years as they take the ACT and SAT apply to colleges and scholarships. So their senior year, we suggest that they take the ACTs, SATs one more try, time just to improve their score. Submit the FAFSA application in October. Apply to colleges as early as possible. Take some college tours. Get some teacher recommendations. Apply to scholarships. And pick a college to attend. There have recently been some changes to the free application for federal student aid, also known as FAFSA. The application can now be submitted as early as October. First, the income tax for the previous year is now used to avoid having to update the information with the current year's income tax information. In order to complete the process, both the parent and the child must have the, an FSA ID number to complete the process. Remember, it takes about three business days to receive the ID numbers after initially applying for them, so you want to get started early. This is a very, there is a very informative blog that answers many of the questions and points out common mistakes made in the FAFSA process. Go to www.blog.ed.gov to find helpful information in navigating the FAFSA process. After working so hard to get into college by having the right classes, good grades, and being involved, Students in today's digital world have additional challenges when applying for colleges. Students must understand internet safety and responsible social media presence. If something is posted once, even if it's deleted later, their post is permanently on the internet. Other users, users can easily repost, copy, or screenshot the post. 
college admissions counselors, and future employees look at, the, at an applicant's social media presence to determine their character and their responsibility. Students must think about what their social media presence says about them and how it makes them appear. Additionally, college admissions counselors may contact your child via email if they have questions. If your child's email address is not professional sounding, be sure they change it now. This is all part of a, a professional, responsible appearance. Only post what you feel comfortable with your future employer seeing. And remember, sharing with friends is also sharing with the world. Many families with children with special needs don't think ch college is an option but it is. With enough planning, children can receive a higher education and excel in different career fields. While not every dream can come true, some can, and many dreams can be adapted. For example, if your child wants to be a veterinarian but has disabilities too severe to receive the necessary education, maybe they can train and work as a technician. Discover what your child wants to do in the future and then brainstorm about how you can help him or her get there in some fashion. Look at their strengths and their interests to help them find their future career path. A good website for this was Disability Living at CA, the National Benefit Authority in Canada. Preparing for college is the same for every student. Finding out their interests, mapping out a plan, taking the required courses, preparing for and taking a standardized test, and ensuring that they have learned enough life skills to take care of themselves. Students with special needs will need more support doing this, and there are some accommodations that can be made for them. For example, there are accommodations that can be made for students with special needs, but prior to requesting those special accommodations, the student must have documentation that those requested accommodations are necessary. Start researching and determine which standardized test, either the ACT or SAT, might work better for your student based on the subject matter and the accommodations provided. Keep in mind while doing this that different schools may require one test over the other. Begin researching schools that accommodate students with special needs or see what local schools can do or can do to help accommodate your child. While IEPs are not honored in traditional college settings, Section 504 ensures that the child with a disability has equal access to an education. Learn more about your child's rights from www.ed.gov. They published an information pam pamphlet entitled Students with Disabilities Preparing for Post-Secondary Education. ThinkCollege.net is a great resource for gathering ideas and resources with an inspirational video of some college students with intellectual disabilities, while www.ed.gov will help you to learn about rights for accommodations. Whether or not you believe it, parents, you are still a big influence in your child's life. The best way to build a college mindset in your children is to talk about higher education as though they will be going. Talk about your own experience in college and talk about a local college that your child is familiar with. Talk about different types of higher education, the different career fields, and the different degrees and certifications they require. Discuss the cost of higher education and the options of how to pay for it. Let your child know that they are not alone when paying for college. But, that but it is their responsibility. Be a model for lifelong learning. Take classes yourself, either at school or online, or take a class with your child. Try a one-day art or a cooking class. If you're taking classes, let your child see you studying. Study at the same time as they are. Talk to your child about your own work and or the jobs of friends and relatives. Ask your child what they like to do and help them look for ways that their interests can be reflected in a career choice. Help your children decide whether they should attend high school and uh, ask your children or help your children decide whether they should attend a high school that offers vocational training and academic training or both. Help your children get information about middle and high school courses that they need to take in order to enroll in college or a post-secondary training program. 
work with the school to provide counselors, career and higher education information, speakers for a career day, and trips to the local employer and employment agencies. Educators can help by planning a career day. Invite professionals from all different careers to come and talk to students about what they do and what kind of schooling they needed to start and enhance their career. Answer questions such as their favorite part of the job or what extra schooling, licensing, or certifications they wish they had or they recommend to others. Talk about your own alma mater and why you chose to go there. Was it the most affordable or was it because of the education program it provided for your career field? Talk about schools in your area and what they are known for, their music program, nursing program, engineering program, etc. Discuss education requirements for different career fields. Public school teachers must have a bachelor's degree and a teaching certificate, etc. Go on field trips to college campuses. Check out the science labs and the art galleries. Take an official tour if possible or go to a performance or exhibit. Just get the students on campus so that they are familiar with what a college campus looks like. You just never know what experiences are going to open doors or interests for students. There are many great resources available, and we used many of them to put together this webinar today. Listed are the primary resources we used. The first one, the Military Child Education Coalition Parent to Parent Programs Chart Your Course Roadmap to Success provides great information on what classes a student should take and when they should take them. We highly recommend attending this workshop if it is offered in your area. The second one is Potential Magazine publishes a college organizer, and we use the 2016 magazine's recommendation, recommendations on what students should be doing to help them be prepared for college. The third one is dcu.org, study.com, and parentsassociation.com, which all have excellent information on how to best prepare for the college admission process and the ultimate goal of pursuing a career. Our research on students with special needs attending college brought us to these websites. The National Benefit Authority of Canada has some great insight on helping those with disabilities to thrive. The Friendship Circle is a website offering advice from a parent on assisting your college-bound student with special needs. Number eight is a link on an excellent slideshow by the Georgia Department of Education. And the Dallas-Fort Worth child has great advice on beginning with the end in mind when preparing special needs children for college. Thank you for taking the time from your busy schedule to meet with us today on this very important topic. We hope that you have found it to be valuable information, and we also hope that you will share this information with other parents. We will be posting the recording of today's webinar on our website so that you may watch it again or share it with others who may have missed it. We will also be sending you a link to a very short survey. It only takes two to three minutes to complete the survey, and this is really the only way we have to know if our presentation was of any value to you or what you would like to see improved, or which other topics you would like to see covered in future webinars. Once you have completed the survey, we will send you a printable copy of the supplemental resources that support this webinar. If you have any questions, or you may, if you want more information, please feel free to contact the MSEC Parent to Parent Programs Manager, Judy Glennon at judy.glennon at militarychild.org. Finally, special thanks again to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for making today's webinar possible.